The mayor says the city is ahead of its road repaving project. For the year 2014, we have repaved 305 lane miles. That's five more lane miles than expected. When Caldwell took office, he promised to repave 300 lane miles per year over the next five years. So far, 703 lane miles have been done. We're not stopping. It's going to get harder now because the streets that remain are some are shorter. They're littler streets. We have to do full depth construction like on Baratania. Um, so it's going to be harder to hit those targets, but we're going to push as hard as we can. And it's good to know we're ahead of our target. So if there is some slippage, we're going to still hit our goal. In Mililani, Mehiula Parkway was recently completed, but it wasn't easy. We had a lot of tree roots to take out and uh, replace. Uh, we had landscaping work. Uh, along with that, we had a lot of uh, curb and gutter that had to be repaired because the root had damaged it. So those were taken out and repaired. Uh, unfortunately, we hit a major drain box that went across Mayula Parkway up here that had to be reconstructed. Uh, that delayed us for a little while, but all in all, uh, from start to finish uh, on this project, uh, it went pretty well. Mayula Parkway for many years was one of the most dilapidated roadways on this island. Uh, many of my constituents complained about having to uh, drive on this road, which they uh, called a nightmare and compared the condition of this roadway to third world conditions. And uh, I can speak personally uh, about this issue because of the fact that I have to drive on this road every day. So I can tell you that um, uh, residents are now uh, breathing a sigh of relief uh, that the road repaving work has finally been completed, which will benefit the thousands of residents, not only in Mililani, but throughout the uh, uh, entire island who regularly travel on this roadway to get to the high school, to the post office, to the major business establishments uh, at the uh, town center, as well as to other residential areas. In the coming months, the city will start repaving roads on the North Shore, Kamehameha Heights, Kalihi, Kaneohe, and Hawaii Kai. We're not resting. We got 300 more to go this year, and, and we're going to move out and get them done. However, the city is doing more than just fixing the roads. It's also taking preventive measures to maintain the good ones. We're continuing to provide the efforts to make sure that the good roads that we have don't fall into disrepair as quickly as they have in the past. We do that primarily now through slurry sealing, which is an asphalt emulsion that we put over the roads. It's almost like painting a road to help restore those, those properties that have actually degraded over time because of exposure to the elements, the wind, the rain, the sun, as well as the traffic. According to the report, city crews also filled nearly 37,000 potholes last year. The city acquired eight new hybrid buses that the mayor describes as stealth-like. State-of-the-art technology that allows buses to use both battery and diesel engines. And while they're moving at a higher speed, the diesel engine is working. But as they pull into a bus stop, and as they idle, and as they take off, it's operated by battery. Now, why is that good? What is the one thing we complain about when we're standing next to a bus stop? It's the noise as a bus pulls in and takes off. It's the exhaust and pollution that blows into our faces, and we don't like it. Well, now, we have eight buses that are going to operate in the dense urban core, Ala Moana, Waikiki area, that is going to be silent and quiet, stealth-like as it pulls in and out of bus stops. Wheelchair passengers like Charlotte Townsend will find the bus to be more user-friendly. I did ride this bus and I have to say it was comfortable, it was quiet, the access for wheelchair access is wonderful. Um, a new kind of tie-down that's on these buses make it easier for the driver uh, to lock us in. So I'm really quite happy and excited to be one of the first to use the bus. And I hope it'll get used with uh, a lot of success for all of our visitors in Hawaii that use wheelchairs and have disabilities. The fleet cost $5.6 million. The federal government covered over 80 percent of the cost. Unlike our old buses, there's no mechanical connection between the engine and the wheels on this bus. So that means that the bus is, is electrified. It runs everything, the, elect the air conditioning, the air compressors, the, the propulsion motor, everything is electric. Uh, and that allows us to do a lot of things. That means that, uh, that we can make the bus quieter. Uh, it means that we should get uh, about 40% more efficiency than we get on our older all-diesel buses. 
uh, and that means a lot. That means low, less greenhouse gases over the life of the bus. Hopefully we can move forward to continuing to make sure that our city is a clean city, efficient city, and by providing uh, quiet experiences for all passengers and transit riders alike. Caldwell says the hybrid buses will service the Waikiki and Ala Moana areas. Part of it is our visitor industry drives the rest of us, whether we work in the industry or not. The success of our visitors, their experience in Waikiki is critical. Mass transit is really critical to our visitors and our employees of Waikiki alike. And it's just it's very exciting to see all these new technologies being implemented. And um, like I said, uh, we're very excited to see these buses uh, running. The mayor says that someday he would like to see nothing but hybrid buses on the streets. Big news for some people. We're going to renovate but not replace the comfort station. This is the comfort station we are looking at replacing um, with a state-of-the-art um, facility that would allow people to go into a bathroom stall to change privately and not in a big room like in here. Over the next couple of months, city crews will renovate the comfort stations and make improvements to the exercise path at Ala Moana Beach Park. We want to make it so it's smooth and safe for people to walk on so they don't trip. We're going to mark it by each quarter of a mile so those who want to measure how many miles they've walked around this incredibly beautiful area. It's going to be laid out in a kind of a blue color, kind of like you see in some tennis courts. So it's going to blend with the sky and the ocean and it's going to, you know, cool. Blue makes us feel cool. Those are only two short-term immediate improvements the city will do out of a nine-point community action plan it came up with to improve the park over the next year. We're not talking about massive change, but we are talking about doing better. Everybody comes from all over the island here. We realize that, and we want it to be a place that everyone wants to come to. Mayor Caldwell says the changes are in response to what the community would like to see done at what he calls the People's Park. This past spring, we met at McCoy Pavilion. We had 300 people show up very passionate about the People's Park and what they wanted to see done or not done. I think right now it's easy for us to say what we don't like. Yeah, we don't like this, we don't like that. We do like the free parking, we do like the surfing. So let's just put in like a parking lot contained to the street side not infiltrating, you know, the not field. Not inside the park. Yeah. What we heard in this community feedback is maintain and fix what is broken. So right over there you see brown grass. What can we do to make sure that that brown grass turns green again by making sure the sprinkler heads are fixed, ones that are broken are replaced, and the ones that aren't spraying properly are readjusted so they spray properly. Just one example. Don't commercialize the park. We've heard that loud and clear, and we do not want to commercialize this park. We want to keep it as a people's park. And finally, people's park, enhance it for the residents. Under the plan, the city will renovate the comfort stations, fix the rocky areas on the beach, irrigate the great lawn, repair the exercise path, increase park staff, beautify the park, build a playground, make the park safer, and also have a local business operate the concession stands. This summer, L&L Hawaiian Barbecue was awarded a five-year contract to do business at the park. L&L opened its first location just in time for the busy 4th of July weekend. We heard from folks, we want good places to eat local food, and what's more local than L&L Drive-In? They've been up now a couple weeks. I was there on 4th of July, on the 4th of July, standing right here. I saw local guys who are camping here come up and say, can I have two bags of ice. You can buy bags of ice. You don't have to get in your car, leave the park, give up your parking space, drive up to Foodland or Safeway or Longs or Times, get your bag of ice and have to come back in and fight for parking. You can get your little wagon and come over here and buy as much ice as you want. That is as local as you can get. It really is the, the parks f for the local people and the residents, and that's what we're looking at, and we're hearing the input, the valuable input that we get from the residents. We got a lot of community feedback, and we still are receiving community feedback, and we want to continue to receive community feedback. It's not like, okay, we heard we're shutting the door because this is an evolving, changing uh, way we want to make this park better. If you have some ideas that you would like to share or changes you would like to see done at the park, let the city know by going to its website at www.ouralamoanapark.com. So what we have here is we have a deck coming across the okay. canal and this allows unfettered access 
to the park where at the moment you sort of have a moat around the park <laughs> yeah. and it's difficult to access the park. So the city is thinking about adding a P.E. Koi entrance for pedestrians and bicyclists at Ala Moana Beach Park. We're creating entrance for people, whether they're walking or on bicycles, and allow people to go straight to the ocean and it'll make it very easy for them to access the park. The entrance was one of several conceptual designs the city unveiled at its second Ala Moana Park Master Plan meeting. The meeting was well attended by park users. We met with you March a year ago in this very room and about the same number of people showed up. And we broke up in the small groups, we talked a lot of, about different things, we heard loud and clear what you wanted and we've been working on the plan ever since. And I want to let you know that this plan is not our administration's plan, this is not the city council's plan, this is your plan. And nothing is set in stone, absolutely nothing. The other proposals include widening the walkway next to the beach and reconfiguring parking around the park without reducing the number of parking spaces. The mayor says the park now has 948 stalls and will have that same amount when the improvements are done. But we're looking at basically eliminating parking on the Makai side, moving it to the Malka side and angling it. Like in my hometown of Hilo right now, Bayfront, Kamehameha Highway, you park at an angle, you get more parking that way. So you're not losing parking by angling. And then you make this more of a true promenade where you make a wider sidewalk with planters so people can enjoy this beautiful walk. The city is also thinking about opening up the underutilized McCoy Pavilion, having beach volleyball courts at the Eva End, and redeveloping the ponds around the park. I love the investment that uh, I'm seeing in these public spaces. I particularly like the idea of reducing the distance of parking lots to uh, areas where our families uh, tend to meet. And I like uh, the ways that they're looking to activate some of the parts of the park that aren't being as heavily used at the moment with uh, the beach volleyball, uh, playground for the kids. Elements like that I think will help turn some of the currently unused portions of the park into a real amenity. These are our thoughts based on what we've heard to date. Um, some of these thoughts uh, we have reached at times for the grandest of proposals, not grand in scale necessarily or, or in dollar and cost, but grand in terms of uh, how we can reach and make this place better. The mayor says the city is hoping to come up with a draft master plan by the end of summer. Then it would take at least another year to complete the final master plan, including an environmental impact statement. But in the short term, the city has already made some park improvements, like repaving the exercise path around Magic Island, fixing the bathrooms, and installing energy-saving LED lights around the park. Information about the next open house and conceptual designs are available at OurAlamoanaPark.com. Mayor Caldwell and the media got a tour of the first gravity flow sewage tunnel being built. We went about 1.6 miles underground to at one point we're almost 300 feet underground in this gravity flow tunnel that we're building. We were in a situation where the ground was collapsing down on us before the TBM even got to it. So as the machine was mining ahead or trying to mine, the ground was just collapsing away and creating a great deal of problems for us. So the men did an excellent job. Looks good. Uh, yeah. Looks great. The tunnel, after we get through mining it, will install oh, fiberglass pipe. Right. It's 10 feet Mine. inside diameter, okay. 20 foot long okay. joints, each one weighing 20,000 pounds. 880 of them have to be lined and put together inside of this before we're done. The tunnel is 60% done. When completed, it will be three miles long and send wastewater from the Kaneohe Wastewater Treatment Plant to the one in Kailua. The tunnel will be built 35 feet below ground in Kaneohe and descend to 60 feet below ground on the other end. 400 feet below the surface is the deepest point, 13 feet in diameter. And the beauty of this is we're going to have sewage moving by gravity and not pumping under pressure. You know, pumping under pressure means you've got to use a lot of electricity. And if there's a break because it's pressurized, the sewage comes out and it's not a pretty picture. When it's completed, we're going to be able to store a lot more sewage when you have wet weather events. Um, it'll impact sewage spills. We'll have fewer of those. And then the really, really good news is that we have capacity for the future. 
Another big benefit is we don't have to put large storage tanks on the Kaneohe side to store that wet weather because the tunnel can do it. And it's also made of an inert material, so less susceptible to corrosion. A tunnel boring machine, 13 feet in diameter, is digging the tunnel. The tunnel runs under Oneava Hills, and initially, residents there had some concerns about the project. Uh, none of those concerns have been a problem. There has been no vibration to speak of. Uh, the noise level was all taken care of by this wall system that was put up. I think until it's done, there are people are still going to be have some concerns about it. But so far, you know, we're very pleased with, with how the project's been progressing and the communication that we've been getting from the city. When it finally gets to uh, Kailua, it's going to be about uh, 63 feet below the surface of the earth. And so the uh, second part of this tunnel project is going to be the construction of a, a pump station, which will then lift uh, the sewage to the surface so that it can be treated here in Kailua. The pipe that we're putting in is going to be fiberglass uh, inert type pipe. Uh, they say it could last 100, 150 years. That's based on testing. Uh, nobody's been around that long to actually uh, know that it lasts that long. We're expecting it to last as long as the Roman aqueduct. The cost for the first phase of the project is $174 million and it should be completed by June. This is the head actually turning, cutting the last bit of rock. After 13 months of drilling, Pohakulani, the tunnel boring machine, completed the three-mile gravity sewer tunnel from the Kailua wastewater treatment plant to the one in Kaneohe. The windward side has a 3.2-mile tunnel that connects Kaneohe and Kailua. That's quite a feat for the windward side and the island of Oahu. I'm hoping that we'll be able to do this in other places. And why do I hope that we can do this in other places? This is about living more sustainable and more green. Instead of pumping sewage under pressure, and as you know what happens when you pump it under pressure, if there's a force main break, a lot of sewage comes out of the ground really quickly. But if it's gravity flow, there's no pressure, and we're not using energy or electricity to pump it. We're using gravity, Mother Nature, to move it from one place to another. The gravity sewer tunnel is the first for the city and the second largest infrastructure project behind rail. At its deepest, the tunnel is 400 feet below ground and 13 feet in diameter. The next phase of the project is to install the pipe to carry the waste. This is the pipe. This is the pipe here that we're going to be lining. Now, you see it curves, but you've got to see the whole thing. It's very thick, and it's amazing how they're going to kind of float this styrofoam cement kind of stuff so it wedges it in place. And it's pumped in, right, or and something? And we pump so it, it in. It. We have to pump this about three and a half miles. So it's not floated, we actually pump it in and we put it in beside, behind the pipe. And that locks the pipe in place, so you have another layer of insulation. This particular pipe that uh, the owner has spec on this has a life of, a protracted life of 100 years. Caldwell says the first two phases of the project cost taxpayers $350 million. An additional $21 million will be spent for the third phase. The upfront costs seem to scare everybody. What the people don't see is the long-term maintenance cost on force mains. Gravity sewer, once it's in the ground, it's pretty much there forever and you don't have to do anything to it. Construction on the tunnel started in 2013 and should be completed in two years. Yeah. We're going to have this tunnel turned over and start uh, the pump systems that uh, um, we talked about. There's odor, uh, con odor control systems that are also going in. And, uh, and then this is also the, one of the wonderful things about this project is that um, it's working so well, we're looking at doing more of them throughout the island. Caldwell says the city is looking into installing another gravity sewer tunnel from Waikiki to the Sand Island Treatment Plant. Ekahi elua ekolu and turn hema. Yep. Perfect. City and state officials turned dirt for the new emergency medical services station Beautiful. being built in Waipio. Beautiful. Well, this has been a long time coming, but this is a very special day for us. It's, um, we are all gathered here for the same reason. Uh, we, are all, we all recognize the importance of the work being done every day for EMS, uh, uh, for the community by our men and women. It takes a special person who can handle this career path and is not an easy one. But it's because of the support of people like you and our community that we, get cut, that we get up every day and do all we can to take care of the sick and injured, 
from our elderly to our keiki. Everyone gets the best in life-saving treatment. Today is an opportunity for us to show our appreciation for those paramedics and EMTs on the road working right now, treating those in need of medical attention. Grading for the site has already started. The 2,600 square foot facility will have enough room for a 900 square foot apparatus bay and be able to house two emergency vehicles. It will service communities between Pearl City and Wahiwa. It's a growing community um, and they need more help. And we really want to thank Michelle Kadani, the senator from this area, and Ryan Yamani, the representative from this area. They stepped up and got us over $3 million to build this great facility that you see, the puka in the ground, this rich soil that one once had sugar cane growing on it, is now going to be a place where lives will be saved, where we'll take care of our people. The mayor says a station could have been built several years ago when the city received $3 million from the state for the project. However, that money lapsed. We have been working at this since 2010, believe it or not. And uh, yes, the funds did lapse under the previous mayor, and there was not uh, any push to get the money uh, encumbered so we could have this day four or five years ago. But it's here now and I really want to thank uh, Mayor Caldwell and his staff and Mark Riggs for hanging in there and keeping uh, us abreast of what was happening and uh, the, how the project was moving along because we know that this community of Waipio Gentry as well as our Mililani community which has grown significantly and uh, Waikeli and of course there is a great need for our EMS partners, and we are certainly looking forward to having you housed here. And this is a state effort helping the city, who then helps this community. Without that money, we wouldn't do this. Today is an opportunity for us to show our appreciation for those paramedics and EMTs on the road working right now, treating those in need of medical attention. Also, four new ambulances were blessed. Kiakua, we ask your Aloha Spirit to be pono with each of our ambulances. Kiakua, each of these vehicles are very, very important to us. So we place this vai right on the front of each of these. And yes, we will continue with the blessing of all of them. These ambulances will replace old ones that have been in service since 2009 and have over 200,000 miles on them. <laughs> The emergency vehicles will serve the Manoa, Maikiki, Downtown and Hawaii Kai communities. EMS receives about 26,000 calls a year. Above this floor on the rooftop is the emergency generator and our radio tower that you can see from the back parking lot. You can see it from miles away. This will be the future weight room and our locker rooms for the men and women which are right next door to us. Leeward Coast residents have a new state-of-the-art police station. The Waianae Police Station will officially open in May. It's really the state-of-the-art station. In my 30-year career, we went from the bunker that was here previously to this state-of-the-art building with equipment in there that is just incredible that I thought I would never see in my career. Leeward Coast residents are relieved to have a station in their neighborhood again. Since the substation was torn down in 2014, the closest police station was out in Kapolei. With this police station now, if something bad happens on this side, they got a perfect place to continue to make sure that they're protected with this new station here out in Waianae. And that is so, so important. It will better service the Leeward community, not only the Waianae, community, but the whole Leeward community by allowing officers to be stationed out here, allowing us to have equipment out here to process arrestees out here and just better deliver law enforcement services to the community. The two-story 25,000 square feet station is three times bigger than the old substation. It also has a full service receiving desk, a meeting room, 14 holding cells compared to three at the old substation on-site gas pumps, and a 90-foot antenna. The old antenna was about, the, t the tower is about 40 feet high, and it wouldn't have survived a Category 1 storm. And so uh, we were really on, on its last legs, and uh, we think it was about 40 years old. The new tower reaches 90 feet and will withstand the upper ra ranges of a Category 4 storm. So we think that in addition to being a lot more uh, resilient to, to the elements, it has much greater coverage. The station also has 63 parking stalls in which 22 will be for public use and a second floor for future expansion.
There are also 37 cameras mounted inside and outside the building. We're very happy about this new facility and we certainly um, feel that it's going to make us safer and help us to enjoy this wonderful environment that we have here on the Leeward Coast. This is just a joy to see and I hope that our community will continue to appreciate it and I'm sure they will. This is beautiful and I thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Eventually, an art piece made by a local artist will cover this bare wall fronting Farrington Highway. So the goal is we need to have the mo'olelo, we need to tell the story of Waianae and to enhance the exterior. The station cost over $16 million to build. All good here today, you can feel the energy and the positiveness. We have all ages out here today, skateboarding, having a blast. The mayor is talking about excitement over the recent reopening of the Banzai Rock Skate Park in Pupukea. Three, two, one, go! All right! The city closed the park for nearly a year so it could expand the skate park. The park now includes ramps, banks, rails, stairs, 30 parking stalls and new landscaping. As you know, skateboarding has evolved where they want more rails, they want different kinds of shapes. They really challenge themselves, and so we responded by putting those features into it. It's way better, but the whole thing is really sticky because it's not been grinded recently. So how do you grind it? Oh, you just kind of turn into it, and then, I don't know, you got to be going really fast. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you're happy it's been reopened? Yeah, I'm so happy. You haven't tried this area though. We got to get out of the way, right? Um, no, I tried. Yeah? How about the railing over here? You tried that? No? Are you going to try it? <laughs> Opening this park is all about kids, but more importantly, you also see a lot of families standing around the edges watching their children. It's about a community, a very strong, tight community on the North Shore, coming together and celebrating outdoors and getting to know each other a little bit better, sharing news, watching their children. And this is the Aloha spirit at work. For me too, it's about kids who may be out doing other things we don't want them doing, doing something very productive, getting exercising, learning a skill, learning to cooperate and work with each other, and becoming maybe better surfers. Maybe some world-class surfers are in this group right here today. So I'm very positive. This is the kind of stuff we need to do in our parks. Activate our parks more not just as ball fields, but other types of fields too. Skateboarding is a big part of it. I just want to thank the community around us. They have been so great about, they're passionate about their community, and they, they take action, and I appreciate that because I've had a lot of people volunteering in this community to make this a better park. Someday, the mayor says he would like to see world-class skateboarding events held at the park. That's something I like to work with the community on. You know, you have Randy Rourke, who's here, who does a triple crown. Perhaps he could help us hook up with those who could put on a skateboard competition. I think that's something that the city, I would like to do that. You know, maybe we do a mayor's cup for skateboarding or a mayor's trophy. I'm willing to do that kind of thing, keeping the community involved in our parks. The park is open to skateboarders of all skill levels. The improvements to the park cost the city $1.1 million. Here's a picture of this park uh, prior to the refurbishment. You look on the, small, the smaller pictures, you'll see where it was sharp and jagged and disconnected and not safe. And of course, the ground, the floor was all pitted and you, know, you could trip and fall down. And we instead did this. So far, the city has fixed 22 comfort stations, 10 playgrounds, and built 13 new playgrounds around the island. Mayor Caldwell made that announcement recently while standing in front of the newest playground at Nu'uanu Valley Park. We're using new technology here. For example, this is the floor. It stands on this platform, so it's kind of cushiony. And if you stand here, you can actually feel some give in it. Totally rebuilt playground. We decided that we had to make it compliant in order to get handicapped people down here. So as you can see now, uh, we provided ramps. Uh, now we person can get off the uh, parking lot and actually get down to a play court down through this back ramp that we put down. And now they can go straight to the bathroom. It's all within a four and a half percent slope or less. So I think that was a great achievement for this park. We've lived here for over 40 years. And I can tell you that what's happening today with the 
with the creation of this new playground is really phenomenal for the neighborhood. Caldwell made improving city bathrooms and playgrounds a top priority of his for the year. His administration has two months left to reach its goal of refurbishing 24 restrooms and 16 playgrounds. The mayor is confident that will get done. We're on target, and as you can see, they're all over the island. You know, we're not neglecting any one place. We're North Shore, we're on the windward side, we're on the west side, we're out down in Nalo in that area, we're down in Hawaii Kai, and we're in the dense urban core. And we're gonna continue to put dots of different sorts all around this island, we're not gonna stop. This is a commitment, you know, parks is one of our five priorities for the four years that I'm mayor, and we're not gonna back away from it. These parks are gonna be safer, and they're better constructed, they're going to last longer, they're going to be less maintenance to them, and, and it's going to be a, a great success for the community, uh, as well as the city and the taxpayer in general. I'm very excited about the mayor making this one of his top priorities of his administration. For too long, our parks have been neglected, and it's about time that we have leadership that will make sure that the parks that so many families go to will be enjoyed in a safe manner, and that's beautiful. The mayor says there are 300 parks on Oahu and 213 comfort stations. He says he'll ask the city council for more money so he can refurbish all of the restrooms.